Hola, and welcome once again to the Schaefer Small Engine Shop and Two Car Garage. An old friend has come back. My buddy, CK, has brought me his snapper rear engine rider for its second trip to the small engine shop. It was here before. I did not make a video on it because it took so dead gum long to get it fixed and I don't have a video cam that I can start and stop and splice two photos together. So when I make a video, I'm making it with my cell phone and I basically have to do it from start to finish. So when it was here, I put on new drive disc on it, uh, I put a new blade on it, greased everything, it was filthy, had the filthiest air cleaner I've ever seen on any engine ever. How it actually would run is beyond me, but it did. So I put a new air cleaner on it, had about uh, two ounces of tar in the crankcase, so I drained it and put new oil in it. And when it left here, it was running great. Uh, I had cut my front and backyard with it. And CK called me the other day and said, oh, I'm gonna start. Did you put a starter on it? Yes, I can put a starter on it. Uh, can I bring it by? Yes, bring it by. I'll check it out. If it needs a starter, I'll get a starter and we'll put a starter on it. But with these snapper mowers like this, there's all kinds of things that can go wrong with it. It could be a solenoid. It could be uh, the compression release that uh, it's broken and the motor's not going to turn over. So lots of possibilities. I told CK to bring it by and I'd check it out and I'll show you what I found here. Let me bring you in a little better. I checked the battery, the battery connections, some of which were loose. I tightened them up and it still wouldn't do anything but click the solenoid. So the solenoid is hidden in this little compartment right here. It has a plastic shroud that goes over it. It's held on with some kind of pins like you'd use on a car body. And I had to pry off with a big screwdriver. But in this beautiful little compartment right here was, what would you expect? A rat nest. A rat nest big as a bird nest. Rat poop everywhere. Rat pee everywhere. Here sits the solenoid. And the solenoid is urine soaked and every connection on the solenoid is urine soaked. All of the connections uh, from different uh, power sources and power uh, uh, out sources, they're all rotten, they're all corroded. So with great effort, I managed to get the solenoid out of it which takes some tools to do. Hello. It takes an impact wrench. It takes a universal joint, quarter inch drive socket to reach in there and get it loose, but I finally got it loose. I'm going to bring this up close. Maybe you can see it. 
This is the old solenoid, completely burned up because it wasn't making good contact, rotten, fell apart after I got it out. Uh, here's one of the battery cables, rotten. Here is the remnants of all the stuff that was connected to it. All rotten, all pea soaked, uh, all of which I'm going to have to replace. And when it goes back to CK, it's not going to have this little plastic cover back on this solenoid box. So when it gets a rat in there, CK can see it and maybe he'll do something about it. But I've got a little bit of work left to do on this thing to get the new solenoid in. Uh, the bottom here of the box. Come on, flashlight. Well, the bottom of the box was all rusted and corroded. So I've had to clean it so I can get a good contact on the new solenoid, which is here. I have a three post solenoid. I'm going back in with a four post because that's what was available uh, that I could go by. So I'm going back to work here. I've already put some new connections on a couple of the wires and uh, we'll see how we progress. Well, this is one of those exercises where you're trying to put a round peg into a square hole. I've got a brand new universal four post solenoid, but this back piece here is too big. I can't fit it into the solenoid box because it butts up against the back main tube of the tractor. So I'm going to have to take it over to the bench and cut this back piece off and see if that'll work. Well, let me straighten you up here. And we'll go over here to the cutting area. Well, we got the steel off and some off the plastic, but it's all sealed up and should work. Let's get down here and see if it'll fit in. I'll be back. Well, of course it doesn't fit. It still runs into this big backbone, but I can get one screw in it to mount it down. And it's not like it's under any big pressure so I'm going to go ahead and put one screw in there's no way in the world I would ever get another could get a drill in there to drill a hole through this case to mount the other one but I'll put one in see how that goes here is the apparatus that's required to try to get in there and mount the solenoid to the frame. Impact driver, quarter inch U-joint, quarter inch extension, three eighths inch socket that'll reach in there and I hope work good enough to tighten that solenoid into the frame. I'll be back. 
Well, all this apparatus worked. I've got it tightened down to the frame, just one bolt. I've abandoned all hope of trying to drill another hole through that frame to mount that solenoid with two bolts. You just can't get to it. I'll continue the march here. Because everything in the battery box and the solenoid box was contaminated with rat pee, I have bought a brand new set of battery cables, which I'm now going to commence to begin installing. I have my little battery powered Dremel that I'm going to clean up all the connections that I'm not going to replace. The cable that started actually looks pretty good. All the rest of it is new. More tools required. Extra long needle nose pliers to hook up the two the trigger to the solenoid and to the other post, the external ground, cause this is a four post solenoid. Okay, left to hook up are, this is to the top post of the solenoid. I've hooked up the church wire and the ground to the two bottom posts on the solenoid. On the top post, of course you got the red lead coming from the battery, and then this thing has a white wire here, I'm not sure what that does, and it has a red wire in here somewhere that's not the main fuse, just right here. All of that was hooked up to the positive side of the battery. So we're going to re-hook it all. And kind of see where we are. As you can see, this is just an absolute Bear to work on. You can see what you're doing. You can't get to what you're doing. You just kind of got to persevere. Come on, bite. All right, that started. And I've got another big rubber strap in there 
because when Charles brought it over, the battery, $100 battery from Tractor Supply was not even remotely secured. So I put a new battery, made a new battery strap for it. And it's in here and it's about three quarters in the way, but I'll get all this tightened up and maybe we'll be ready for a test run. We'll see. One of the frustrating things about working on some of this stuff is illustrated right here. I've got a brand new battery cable, ground cable, and it screws on to a bolt directly onto the engine. But you can't get to the bolt. No socket will fit on it because you've got all of this throttle apparatus up here that's blocking it. So you have to get your oldest manual wrench out. I don't know why we're not in focus here, but that's what it takes to finally get the bolt off where you can hook this thing up. We're getting close to end here. All right, here goes nothing. And I don't really know a lot about this thing, but we're going to find out if it'll fire up. I think all the safety switches have been disconnected. Choke. It doesn't have a choke on. It doesn't have enough gas in it to run a wheat here.
guarantee you it's out of gas. Stay tuned and you will see a piece of doo doo in action.